Proximal Policy Optimization, PPO, is one of the most widely used algorithms in reinforcement learning. It was designed to improve the stability and performance of earlier policy gradient methods. Think of PPO as striking the perfect balance between simplicity and effectiveness, which is why you'll see it used in fields ranging from robotics to video games. Let's explore it in four parts. The Proximal Policy Optimization Architecture The Role of the Clipping Mechanism in PPO's Trust Region The Main Differences Between PPO and TRPO the PPO handle the trade-off between exploration and exploitation. Now let's explore how proximal policy optimization architecture achieves this. The first. Key concepts of PPO. Let's break PPO down into its essential parts. 1. Policy function. The policy function is like the agent's brain. It decides what action to take based on the current state. The ultimate goal is to train this brain to maximize cumulative rewards over time. 2. Advantage function. This function helps us evaluate how much better a specific action is compared to the average action. It's like asking, was this action a good idea, given the situation? The advantage function guides the updates we make to the policy. 3. Surrogate objective function. PPO doesn't optimize the actual objective directly. Instead, it uses a surrogate objective, which is an approximation that's easier to work with. This lets us perform multiple updates efficiently on the same batch of data. The second, how PPO works. PPO operates in two main steps. One, data collection. The agent collects data by interacting with the environment using its current policy. This generates a collection of experiences, like a diary of states, actions, and rewards. Two. Policy Update Using this data, PPO updates the policy. However, it does this carefully, making sure updates stay within a trust region to keep things stable. It's like fine-tuning rather than completely rewriting the policy. The third, Clipping Mechanism One of PPO's key features is its clipping mechanism. Here's why it's important. When updating the policy, we compare how likely an action is under the new policy versus the old one. This ratio is called RT. This is the formula. If this ratio goes too far outside a safe range, the clipping mechanism steps in. It prevents the update from making drastic changes, which could destabilize training. The clipped objective function looks like this formula. Here, AT is the advantage estimate, and epsilon is a hyperparameter, usually 0.1 or 0.2. This mechanism ensures updates are conservative, preventing big jumps in the policy. The fourth, implementation steps. To implement PPO, you follow these steps. Initialize the networks for the policy and value function. Use the current policy to collect trajectories from the environment. Compute advantage estimates, often using a method like generalized advantage estimation, GAE. Update the policy and value networks using mini-batch stochastic gradient descent and the surrogate objective. Repeat the process until you reach a good level of performance. In summary, PPO's design ensures robust performance while remaining easy to adapt to various tasks and environments. Its careful update strategy, combined with practical features like clipping, has made it a go-to choice in modern reinforcement learning. Now, let's dive into the clipping mechanism in proximal policy optimization which is critical for maintaining stability and efficiency in policy updates. This mechanism acts like a safeguard, controlling how much the policy can change at each step while still allowing steady learning. Here's how it works. The first, approximating trust regions. The clipping mechanism is PPO's way of approximating what's called a trust region, a concept from earlier algorithms like trust region policy optimization, TRPO. In TRPO, strict constraints, like limiting KL divergence, ensure policy updates don't stray too far from the current policy, but these constraints can be computationally expensive. PPO simplifies this by using a clipped objective function to restrict how much the policy ratio can deviate from one. This ratio compares the new policy to the old one, and the clipping keeps it within a range defined by epsilon, usually 0.1 or 0.2. This approach keeps updates conservative yet effective. The second, controlling policy updates. If an action appears highly favorable, 
the clipping ensures that the policy doesn't give it too much credit. This avoids overconfidence. On the other hand, for unfavorable actions, the clipping restricts how much they can be penalized. This balance prevents updates from becoming extreme and helps the agent maintain a mix of exploration, trying new things, and exploitation, sticking to what works. The third, direct optimization with gradient descent. Unlike TRPO, which requires complex optimization methods, PPO's clipped objective is simple enough to optimize directly using standard gradient descent. This makes PPO easier to implement and faster to train, as it avoids the need for computationally expensive second-order methods, faster convergence, and a more practical algorithm for real-world applications. The fourth, enhancing stability and robustness. The clipping mechanism ensures that policy updates remain within a safe range, which prevents the agent from making overly large adjustments that could destabilize learning. This stability means the agent can improve steadily over time without the risk of catastrophic performance drops. It also makes PPO robust to fluctuations in advantage estimates or noisy rewards. The fifth, encouraging exploration. Even with constraints, the clipping mechanism leaves room for exploration. It allows the agent to try less preferred actions that might lead to better long-term outcomes. At the same time, the clipping prevents the policy from deviating too far from behaviors that have already proven successful. This balance helps the agent explore the action space comprehensively while maintaining focus on what works. In summary, the clipping mechanism is central to PPO's success, effectively simulating trust regions without the complexity of strict constraints. It ensures balanced learning by controlling policy updates, supports efficient optimization, and provides stability even in the presence of noisy data. By encouraging exploration while retaining effective strategies, this mechanism combines simplicity, robustness, and flexibility, establishing PPO as one of the most popular reinforcement learning algorithms. Now let's explore the key differences between proximal policy optimization, PPO, and Trust Region Policy Optimization, TRPO, two reinforcement learning algorithms that aim to improve policies effectively and efficiently. The first, optimization approach for TRPO. TRPO uses a constrained optimization method. It maximizes the expected reward while ensuring the new policy doesn't deviate too much from the old one. This constraint is enforced using the kullback liebler KL divergence, which measures how much the new policy differs from the old policy. The mathematical objective is this formula. Here, delta controls the allowable change. For PPO, PPO replaces TRPO's complex constraint with a clipping mechanism in its objective function. Instead of limiting KL divergence explicitly, PPO ensures stability by restricting how much the probability ratios can change. This is the formula. This simplification makes PPO easier to implement and adjust. The second, complexity and implementation. For TRPO, TRPO's constrained optimization requires second-order optimization techniques like conjugate gradient methods, making it computationally intensive and harder to implement. For PPO, PPO uses first-order optimization methods, which are simpler and more practical. This makes PPO more user-friendly and easier to tune for a variety of problems. The third, sample efficiency for TRPO. TRPO may need more samples to perform well, as it strictly limits the size of policy updates to ensure stability. For PPO, PPO is often more sample efficient, achieving similar or better performance with fewer samples. This efficiency is due to its ability to perform multiple updates on the same batch of data. The fourth, flexibility in policy architecture. For TRPO, TRPO can face difficulties with architectures that involve shared parameters between the policy and value function or noise. For PPO, PPO is more flexible, supporting shared architectures like actor critic models and handling noisy updates better. This flexibility allows it to adapt to diverse environments and designs. The fifth, exploration and exploitation for TRPO. 
The KL divergence constraint in TRPO ensures updates are conservative, which promotes stability, but may limit exploration if not properly tuned. For PPO, PPO strikes a better balance. The clipping mechanism allows for controlled exploration, enabling the agent to test new strategies without risking overly aggressive updates that could destabilize learning. In summary, PPO simplifies TRPO by replacing the complex KL constraint with a clipping mechanism, making it easier to implement and more flexible. PPO is more sample efficient, less sensitive to hyperparameters, and achieves consistent performance across tasks. These advantages make PPO a practical and popular choice for many reinforcement learning applications. Now let's break down how proximal policy optimization manages the balance between exploration and exploitation, a critical aspect of reinforcement learning. The first, stochastic policies. PPO uses stochastic policies to naturally encourage exploration. Instead of choosing a fixed action deterministically, the agent selects actions based on probabilities. This randomness ensures the agent doesn't just repeat known successful actions but tries new ones, which might lead to discovering even better strategies. The second, clipping mechanism. T. The clipping mechanism is another way PPO maintains balance. During training, the policy update is restricted by a clip that limits how much the probability ratio can change. This means the agent can explore by trying slightly different actions without making drastic, unstable shifts in behavior. The result is controlled exploration that doesn't compromise the agent's ability to exploit what it has already learned. The third, entropy bonus. PPO includes an entropy bonus in its objective function. Think of entropy as a measure of randomness or uncertainty in the agent's choices. By encouraging a higher entropy, the agent is nudged to try less certain actions rather than always sticking to familiar ones. This helps the agent avoid getting stuck too quickly in a specific strategy, allowing it to explore more possibilities. The fourth, generalized advantage estimation, GAE. PPO uses generalized advantage estimation to stabilize learning. GAE smooths out advantage estimates, which are used to decide how much better an action is compared to others. This stability lets the agent make more informed updates, balancing between trying new actions and sticking with successful ones. The fifth, adaptive exploration techniques. Recent improvements like adaptive exploration add flexibility to the process. Early in training, when the agent knows little about the environment, it focuses on exploration. Later, as it learns effective strategies, it shifts toward exploitation of those strategies. This dynamic adjustment ensures that exploration is emphasized when it's most valuable, but doesn't persist unnecessarily. The sixth, hyperparameter tuning. PPO's hyperparameters are fine-tuned to control this trade-off. The entropy coefficient determines how much the agent is rewarded for uncertain decisions. A higher coefficient encourages more exploration. The clipping parameter ensures stable updates by preventing overly large changes maintaining a balance between exploration and exploitation. In summary, proximal policy optimization effectively balances exploration and exploitation by integrating strategies like stochastic policies for natural randomness, a clipping mechanism for controlled updates, and an entropy bonus to prevent premature convergence. Generalized advantage estimation stabilizes learning, while adaptive techniques adjust exploration as the agent gains experience. Fine-tuned hyperparameters further refine this balance, making PPO a stable, efficient, and reliable algorithm for discovering optimal policies.